Hi and welcome to Leech Room Daily. My name is Brett Neerly and you're listening to episode 206 of the podcast. We are taking part in another preview of sport for this weekend. There's just so much going on. We had to squeeze it into two shows. We just didn't want to make you sit and wait for two hours on a single show. So we have done the Intermediate Championship already earlier in the day and now you're listening to the senior championship preview along with a few other bits and pieces that needed to be said ahead of this weekend very limited sporting action we will talk a little bit about manor rangers before we get into the gaelic action now today's show is brought to you in association with the local enterprise office leitrim who are doing their best to help businesses take that step back towards reopening after the covid lockdown and one of the particular vouchers that we'd like to talk to you about the grants that they're running at the moment is a online trading voucher up to two and a half thousand euros or 90 percent of the cost of a new e-commerce platform for your business so if your business would like to add an online trading aspect to your business or maybe spruce up what's there at the moment on your online platforms the online trading voucher from the local enterprise office in Leitrim is your bag now here at Leitrim Daily we are supporting businesses to do that also I'm going back to my roots as an award-winning web designer to work with some clients from around the county and we are looking for new clients to come on board and let us help you take those steps into the digital age for your business. Feel free to get in touch, info at leitrimdaily.com or drop us a message on social media and we'll make contact and sort that out for you with the help of today's partners, the local enterprise office in Leitrim. Thank you very much to the support there to everybody involved. Moving on in terms of two things we must talk about before we get into the actual nitty gritty of the Senior Championship Games this weekend. And I want to tell you about the situation with tickets for this weekend's game. The first ever announcement of an all-ticket game in County Leitrim was between Mohol and Balnamore. In reality, it's going to be across the board. The new government guidelines saying with maximum of 200 people at games really means that there's about 60 people from each side as supporters will be allowed attend the game 200 includes all of the officials players and everybody associated with the game taking place which means 120 or so tickets remaining across both teams it is up to the home team and how that's distributed but i think most teams will be accommodating both sets of supporters please touch base with your club before you travel to a game don't just show up unannounced or without access because We don't want to have situations developing across the county where somebody is trying their best to protect everybody and refuses you entry to a game. It could cause embarrassment for you, embarrassment for the person on the gate, and it's just unnecessary. Please don't go to the game unless you're sure you will get access. When you get inside, for those lucky enough to actually secure tickets, please wear face masks and observe social distancing and try and stay away from people as much as possible in the venues across the county. It is something we don't want to have to revisit over the next few weeks where games could be cancelled or worse, people get sick and people pass away. We want to try and avoid that as much as possible as a community who follow Gaelic games in the county. So please behave yourselves, look out for each other, look out for yourselves and most of all enjoy being out and about and actually being able to play football and hopefully that won't be removed from us over the coming weeks if we all manage to behave ourselves so please keep that in mind as you're going to games this weekend the next thing i want to talk about is all in for aina and this is a fundraising initiative for the child of a ahavas woman yvonne brady a well known to anyone involved in ladies football over the years herself her sisters and her parents eamon and breach hugely involved in saint joseph's and leitrim ladies football over the last two decades. Her son, Aina, at 17 months old, was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia uh, back in May, and he has been through a huge ordeal since. He's still in hospital. His mum has had to take time off work unpaid uh, and all the associated costs of being with her son over the next few months as he goes through a huge ordeal of intensive treatments. There's a full information of it on our the GoFundMe page for the campaign and they've raised an absolutely amazing €25,000 so far and more than €25,000 of a €40,000 target and that money is to help the family survive and to cope with the loss of earnings and the huge costs associated with the child going through that particular illness and our thoughts really with the uh, 
the Brady family with Yvonne with her child and their entire family at this time and if you are in a position to help any donation big or small would be greatly appreciated by the community over there in Ahavas who are rallying around uh, Yvonne and her family at this awful time for the family. The final thing before we get into the Gaelic Games is, of course, as I mentioned at the top of the show, there is one other sporting event taking place in the county this week. We don't have time to squeeze it in, but we will do a proper look at it in the Roundup show on Monday here on the program. And that, of course, is Junior Soccer and Manor Rangers, who, as you may remember, were absolutely flying at the end of the the season as they came into a, a big run of games with a one-point lead at the top of the table. Now, they take a one-point lead from Carberry, who have a game in hand. They face each other in the B Park on Sunday morning at 11 a.m., and it's a massive game. Victory for Manor Rangers would literally put one hand on the title. A defeat or a draw would leave it for another day to be decided, but Manor Rangers could really take a step towards a first-ever Super League title, which would be... A phenomenal result for the North Leitrim Club. I think the whole county is behind them. I know soccer is not traditionally that strong in the county outside of maybe a couple of hotspots, but it's a huge achievement for any club to compete with all of the soccer mad clubs in Sligo and be in with a shot. And I think a good crowd on on sun, Sunday morning, hopefully maybe the 200 that are allowed to attend it, uh, again, observe social distancing, wear a face mask. But if you are in a position to come out, check with the club, Make sure about uh, access to the game. And if they are able to accommodate you, please get along and support the lads on Sunday morning. Now, back to the main focus of today's show, and that is a preview of the teams taking part in the Senior Football Championship. Last week, we went through with Brandon Guckian uh, the chances that each team have going into the games. You can go back and find that on the podcast feed. But today, we're going to be speaking to the clubs themselves. And in their own words, you're going to hear how preparations have gone for them, how they've dealt with the situation around the lack of ability to get together and collective train in recent weeks. But we'll hear from them in their own words about what they're hoping to achieve over the next few weeks as it really is only 10 weeks now to the scheduled date for the county final. Hopefully everything in terms of the virus stays under control and that will come to pass. And of course, four games this weekend in the first round of fixtures in the Connacht Gold Senior Football Championship. We're going to start with last year's champions and the respect that they deserve for that. Connor Dolan will be joining us later to talk about their chances against Alan Gales, who will be speaking to us via Dermot McKiernan. We'll be talking to them in just a few moments. But the full fixture list is, of course, starting with that game, Alan Gales versus Glencar Manor. Uh, that is in Shane McGettigan Park in Drumshambo at 7pm. All games 7pm. Leitrim Gales, they host Melvin Gales also in Group B. While in Group A, Mohol will entertain Balnamore and probably what is the tie of the round. Uh, again, all ticket. Make sure you have access to the ground before you show up to that particular game. And in the final game of the group to be played tomorrow, it's Fina versus St. Mary's. Of course, Ahwillan and Drum Riley idle this weekend. They will be in action next week. We won't be speaking to them this week, but they will be on the show next week ahead of their first games. Anyway, let's go back to the north of the county and we'll talk to Connor Dolan, last year's winning player of the match and captain with the victorious Glencar Manor Hamilton side to talk about how they've been preparing for this year's championship. Now we're going to take a look around the clubs in the county in the senior football championship and then later in the show in the intermediate football championship. We're going to start probably with the current holders and the current holding captain and player of the match from last year's final. Connor Dolan joins me now. Connor, it's been almost 12 months since uh, you lifted the FINA Cup. It's... uh, it comes around fairly quick, even in these uh, weird and wonderful times with the coronavirus. Yeah, how's things, Stephanie? Um, yeah, I suppose it has. It's been a very quick year. Um, that was the uh, October last year, and it's hard to believe that in a few weeks' time it'll be um, the final will be held again. Um, I suppose, as you said, with the strange circumstances and missing out on a, on a few months of training, it has came a lot quicker than uh, than expected. But at the same time, it's great to be facing into a, another championship campaign again. And um, I'm sure every every team in the county will be looking forward to getting going at the weekend. We've spoken a good bit about how you, you got on last year. Of course, player the match, as I mentioned, in the final. And from a personal point of view, has that sunk in yet? And, and is that 
history now or does it drive you forward? Is there ambitions for two in a row there? Yeah, I suppose it took a while to sink in. It was it was huge for us after you know losing a couple of finals. But as you said, that, that's history now. That's 2019. It's done. It's over with. And 2020 is a new year. It's a chance for uh, at other teams in the county to, to make their stamp. And it's also a chance for us to try and retain our title. And as you said, you know, we'll be doing um, everything we can um, to bring the Fiend Cup back to, to Manor Hamilton again. Um, it's never easy to retain a, a senior championship in, in Leitrim. Um, as you know, as you look back at the last few years, it's it's nearly changed over every year. Um, but you know, uh, it's a short year, and we're going to give you know give it a good effort, give it everything we can, uh, and I suppose try our best just to retain the title. Now, Manor have had plenty of success at senior championship level over the last decade or so. Two men who have been instrumental in most of those victories, James Glancy, Pat Gilmartin, no longer in the squad, both retired, both in their late 30s, it has to be said, almost touching 40. So they're at that stage of their careers, but that's not to be unexpected. In terms of how the squad is fair and without them, has, is there new blood to replace that, that talent that you've lost? Yeah, well, as you said, you know, they've been around for the last, I suppose you could say the last 20 years, really. Um, both players excellent in the dressing room and, and excellent on the pitch. Um, last year, the two of them had outstanding performances um, throughout the the championship. And obviously, you know, they're going to be huge losses for us um, this year, both in the dressing room and, and on the field. But, you know, when something like that happens, it's up to, to other younger lads. They're going to be given a new opportunity and, and a chance to shine. And it's up to them now to go and, and grab that opportunity and to take it. Um, we've been getting great numbers at, at training. Um, there's a lot of new younger lads in. Uh, it's their first experience, I suppose, of, of playing in a in a senior side. And uh, it's a huge opportunity for them uh, in the common championship to, you know, to get game time and to, to do what they can with that game time. Of course, changing the managerial hot seat as well this year. Shane Ward and Kieran Fox stepped down at the end of last season and they've been replaced by former club goalkeeper and senior championship winner himself, Sean Boylan. What has Sean brought to the position? Yeah, um, at the end of the last year, the two lads, uh, Shane Ward and Kieran Fox, um, said that they were going and they had put in a huge amount of work for, with us well, the two years that were with us. Uh, Sean has come in at the start of the year and um, you know he's had, ha, has a lot of experience as you said he won a senior championship with Lancair Manor himself and uh, you know he's he knows everyone well he knows each of us what we can do on the pitch and uh, you know training has been going um, pretty well I suppose it wasn't ideal for him um, the break in, in training uh, for the few months that there was with the, the coronavirus but um no, everyone's attitude has been really good and uh, I think Sean has been getting on really well with us and he'll be excited to to start and uh, get started on Saturday evening. Of course, Saturday evening, you're down to Shane McGettigan Park in Drumshambo. Alan Gale's the opponents. Most people have you as out-and-out favourites, including the bookies. What's your own thoughts going into the game on Saturday night? Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about the bookies. Um, you know, Alan Gales, it's always a tough game against Alan Gales. I know last year in, in the quarter final, um, we bet them by a, a great margin, but I don't think it reflected really. They didn't turn up on the day. Over the last few years, Alan Gales are always a team I've been thinking, you know, they're a young side. You know, they could really give it, the championship a rattle, but I suppose they've had players going away to for the summer and, and not available. This year, I think they have most of their players. Um, at home and I think um, I'm not expecting an easy game on, on Saturday evening I think it'll be a, a tough game between the two of us and I'm hoping just that we can get uh, two points on, on Saturday evening I suppose looking forward to the whole championship what would be deemed a successful year for, for Glencar Manor is anything less than another victory overall um, I suppose a, a step backwards yeah well I suppose we've always set the, the standards high um, over the past number of years and um, you know, we surely want to get back to a county final and as I said earlier, we'll do everything we can to try and retain it. Well listen, Connor, with that uh, spirit I'm sure you'll go far in this year's championship, much like last year. The very best luck to you the weekend and for the, the season coming. Thanks very much, Refney. Thank you. Jeremy McKiernan, new year, new challenge, must be delighted to be back. Yeah, look at it's uh, it's great to be back. Um I suppose 
the the layoff has boys hungry as ever again for the last couple of months. So um, look, it's good to get back together, train together, back playing with friends, I suppose. And I suppose the the, the challenge of championship coming up is exciting. What's the team looking like in Alan Gales this year with the championship ahead? Yeah, look at us, great. Uh, boys are back, as I said, hungry as ever. We've uh, new additions and we've got some of the old timers back. So look, we're looking forward to it. It's uh, an exciting pro a prospect uh, going into it. So look, we're going to put the shoulder to the wheel and see where we come out after that. What can you tell us about the new additions to the team? Um, who might have come up from minor grades last year that people who watch the senior teams in the county might not be aware of just yet? Yeah, I suppose we've a couple of young, exciting players. Uh, especially next year, we've we've six or seven, but this year we've a few coming up. Uh, Emmett Emmett Morn, um, look looks to be a great baller and things like that. So hopefully, hopefully he'll be able to pull his weight and 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 bring us through if if all comes to all. Who are you missing from last year? Um, I suppose not really many um, from last year. Um, I suppose it's a disappointment for a few of the lads, but uh, Adrian Sorhan and and David Wynn are, are two casualties from last year. But uh, there's some great lads there to, to step in and take their place. So we're not really, really missing out. We're we're still at full strength. You have a nice draw, according to most neutrals. Uh, Leitrim Gales in your group, neighbours Carrick, not too a million miles away either. Uh, Manor current champions would be a bit of a daunting task for you. Andrew Riley complete the group. Where do you see yourselves finishing out of that group of five? Look at I suppose people are saying we got a lucky draw. I don't really see it as a lucky draw, to be honest. Uh, them teams are there for a reason. Senior level, they're they're fighting and they're always been there. So um, look at we're just going to put our shoulder to the wheel. We're going to try try as hard as possible to to get the wins in each of those games. We're excited. Boys are very very chomping at the bit of training to get going, to get into matches. So it'll all all come down to that. But I think I think we'll we'll give it our best shot, and see where we go from there. What would be deemed a success by the squad and the the management team at the moment? Like, are, is there a realistic? ambition to win the championship or would a semi-final place or a quarter-final place be seen as success or, or wh what is the goal for the year essentially? I suppose our goal for the year is definitely to, to, to come out of the group so we'll be looking to to come out and look we'll take it from there everything is a bonus after that um, but I have faith in the lads the new lads and the old lads that's there it's a good blend so hoping to, to, to go as far as we can and pu push each other as, far, as best we can. How much of a hindrance has it been not getting a league campaign, not getting that opportunity to blood those young lads into the team? Yeah, look, I suppose it's been it's been tough. Um, it's been very unusual. Um, I suppose we've great numbers of training, which is uh, which is a positive. So we've been able to have a few in-house games, things like that. Um, look, at, it's like like other clubs, we're having a few challenge games, but it's just not the same as what a league campaign would be. Fighting for promotion, fighting for 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 a title, but. Uh, Look, it's been different. It's been strange, but we we've been we've been training well. We've been working hard, so hopefully it'll come come down to that. First game out. What's the expectation? Any surprises from the Drumshambo lads? Yeah. Um. Look at Manor down to down to Drumshambo. It's um. It's it's going to be an entertaining battle to say the least. So hopefully the lads there will will, will put up a fight and and uh, hopefully hopefully get the win. James Flynn, Leitrim Gales captain for their first ever stint at a senior championship. It must be exciting times for the club. Definitely is, Breffney. Um, we're we're really looking forward to it. I suppose look at it's it's unknown territory for ourselves. Um, first year in senior, um, coming up from intermediate last year as well. Um, you know we had a great year last year. Lots of positives to take for it, but this is a massive step up for us. Um, and we know that you know we'll take that with you know everything that comes with it. Um, but we're we're definitely looking forward to it. In terms of senior experience, you've been in Division 1 in the league for two years, or two campaigns, obviously this year it didn't happen. It's a very inexperienced side, albeit with a couple of county senior panellists and county senior regulars in the team. What's the hopes and aspirations for the club this year? Uh, look, we, as I said, like when you come into a senior championship, you're looking at, you know, you obviously have aims and targets at the start of the year. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll focus on it game after game. I, I think you know, that's the only thing you can do, and especially with championship, it was the same as last year. We took it game by game. Um, you focus on the dif different little things that you focus on for each team. Um, you know, things for positions wise. You know, the way you set up and different things like that. And it'll be no different. Um, obviously, it's a it's a it's a it's a bigger task. Um, but I, I, you know, I think we were well able to well able to deal with that. Every year, clubs look to the 
crop of minors from last year that are now eligible to play. I know one big name that's come through is Donald Casey, already on the fringes of the senior county panel. Never actually played a club championship game in the county, only playing in the Connacht Club Championship last year because of injury. How big of an addition are players like that and who else is maybe waiting in the wings to make an, an impact in this year's championship? Yeah, look at this. Look, at I, I've been with the under-17s um, the last two years and just one lad you mentioned there, I hadn't actually managed him with it, but Donald Casey has come through since last year. Um, had a great game in Tulsk, um, was really pushing himself towards even before that as well. Um, but I think that was a that was a great game for him to come in. Um, but look, Donald has a he's a very steady young lad. Um, you know he he's you know great shoulders on him. You know he you know he's um, how would you say he is? Um, he can he can take it well. You know and um, you know he's a great lad to have on the field. Great communicator stuff like that as well. But. Um, Look, there's lots of young lads there that have come through this year. You know, I talk about lads that maybe came through last year. We we have a very young panel, um, but it's great to see these younger lads coming through. And I I, I do always say like uh, things like that keep you on your toes as well as as a, as a senior player. Um, and you know, it's something that I like to see. Maybe some lads don't like to see it at times. You know, when they're when they're when they're moving on. But um, I think it's it can only be a, a benefit to the club as well. In terms of the obviously the COVID and the coronavirus has affected. Oh, everyone's season this year. How has the coronavirus lockdown affected preparations for this year within the club? Yeah, it's been it's been difficult. Look at from um, from underage all the way up. It's been very difficult. Um, but as soon as, as as things got to go ahead, um, we were straight back in training. Um, I think you know it, it's a year where you're you're kind of enjoying it. You know, we had no pre-season training. Well, we did have a small bit of tri- pre-season training at the start of the year, but it's it's a year that most lads should enjoy playing football. Um, you know, we were we were football was taken as taken away from us for for quite a while this year and I, I think lads were you know uh, chomping at the bit to get back training as well so um, I think it's something that can only benefit ourselves um, and a lot of lads were very eager to get back this year no no more than myself I was mad to get back and just see the lads I think that was the main thing of it you know um, it's a tough time for tough time for everyone but it was great to get back you know and get to you know have, have the chats with the lads and you know a bit of crack at training that's that's the main thing and it was very very good to get back. Obviously yourself and your brother Brendan have had a taste of senior football before, uh, having played with Carrick in the past, won a county championship in the past is that within this group of players here at Leitrim Gales, could they surprise everybody and challenge for the title in well not surprise everybody, that's a bit disrespectful but surprise most people saying a team up from intermediate will struggle in the first year yeah, look, that's going to be the that's going to be the views of a lot of people. You know, that's that's the way. Usually, you know, the thing is that the intermediate team comes up. Um, sometimes that you know teams can surprise um, can surprise the others that that do think that. But look, we're coming in with a, a huge amount of confidence, and um, we've been going about things quietly. And um, lads are happy with what's going on. Um, and yeah, just even with the experience with Carrick as well as was like you know we had a very young team that time too. Um, and as I said, it was I suppose Carrick's in that type of transition period now where they're you know bringing through lots of young lads as well um, no more than ourselves here um, lots of young lads coming through as well so that's you know it's, it's great to see okay, well listen thank you very much best luck well, Brefley, thank you now turning our attention to the very north of the county up in Kinlaw we are joined by their captain for this year Emlyn Mulligan a role he's not that unfamiliar with well Emlyn welcome back to the program Great to join you, Brefney. Um, great to be able to come on here and speak about a potential championship game this weekend and in the next coming weeks. So, thanks for having me on. You say potential championship game. Is there any worry? Your other role, obviously, in your day job as a, a guard, is there something you don't know? Will, is there a chance these games won't go ahead at the weekend? No, well, I think it, the way the way life is at the minute, we take every day as it comes, and I suppose we're reading different things in different counties and different clubs pulling out of you know taking precautions due to you know we don't know what will happen in our club tomorrow morning or or Leitrim Gales respectively. So I just think as it is, we're gonna have to take day on day, week on week, and you know there's a lot of there's a lot of I suppose fear out there within within communities, and I suppose it, it's it's uh, circumstances we're not used to, and, and I suppose nobody can really predict the future, but hopefully. Um, all going well that we I suppose that we will be lining out this Saturday evening but I suppose I'm just looking on the on the on the caution side of things that who knows what, what lies ahead for us. In terms of Melvin Gill's preparations obviously affected by the lockdown, but how have preparations been over the last couple of weeks with the team back together in training? Ah yeah, listen, it's nice to get back. I think as you said there, listen, every team's in the same position and I think I suppose for myself, you know, I'm 32 years of age now, getting back out playing, and I, I suppose you've that feeling of really being like a child again, you know. And I suppose the way I'm approaching the championship, my own kind of mindset is I'm not really thinking of winning it, I'm not really thinking of who we're opponent. I'm just happy to be back out playing, and 
I suppose I can feel that myself in training, just just eager to get get out there amongst the lads and getting stuck in and just enjoyment of it more so, Refney. I think the fact that, as you said, four months ago, we didn't think we'd play any championship. So to have that now in our grasp, I think, you know, there, it's, it's time for players just to go out and enjoy it. And I think you can see that among the, among the gang, especially with ourselves. Lads are just delighted and obviously numbers are huge and uh, the enthusiasm is there. So uh, obviously the downfall is a couple of lads are maybe abroad for clubs and that can't come home. But... At the minute, most clubs, whatever we have at home, you know, the, the, the commitment level has been great. And I suppose the banter to get in amongst the lads has been great. But yeah, listen, it's great to look forward to a game this weekend. And that's what we, that's what we, that's what we train for. Um, and so realistically, just looking forward to it. The travel situation, is that a double-edged sword though? Because I'm sure there's players in your club and, and other clubs around the county that are at home this summer who maybe might not have planned to um, if everything had been normal. Yeah, well, that's it too. And I suppose that... The, the lure of going to the likes of New York and Boston these places to play club, to play club football in the summer has, I suppose, has halted the, the plans for a lot of younger lads. You know, I did it myself over the years. And, um, I suppose in that way, it's kind of helped to keep lads at home. And I suppose it's we've, we've had a lot of players coming out who maybe had retired last year. Um, it suited them to come back this year because it's a short season. And maybe going forward, you have to look at that part of it too. And maybe, you know, the, the short season kind of is lucrative for players to come back and get involved because, you know, it's not taking up the whole, their whole livelihoods, you know. Yeah, I suppose even in your own situation, you've been playing constantly. You won't be in talk of retirement just yet, but you are the other side of 30 now, maybe from where you were a couple of years ago. Is that a factor in your own consideration as you go forward, maybe that if the season did take place over, even if it was 12 or 15 weeks, would that make it more manageable for older players or players with other commitments to really commit to the, the sport through the summer? Yeah, I do. I, I, Definitely agree, and I can see that already, you know. And I think even from your own personal case, um, with injuries and all over the years, with problems with my knees, I think the shorter campaign, uh, it's having less of stress on my body, and I can probably feel that too, you know. Or if you're dragging out a season for nine, ten months of intensive training, it's very hard to keep the body consistently at, at that peak level. But at the minute, you know, a lot, a lot of us have been doing our own work during COVID. Obviously, it's not the same intensity as it is in training, but still getting back there in the pitch in the last three weeks, you can still see the sharpness coming on in that space of time. And, you know, we have four games now in a group, which is going to bring us on another four weeks, and hopefully you're going to get that a couple of wins that will put you into quarter final position. And even at that, I think eight to ten weeks is plenty of time for lads to be getting hitting hitting peak fitness. You know, you mentioned a few lads coming back from retirement. Also, James Phelan in a second campaign. Uh, will that bit of stability in the club, one of only three managers in his to be in a more than a, a second campaign or more than the first campaign, should I say, with their clubs, will that give you a bit of a boost? Semi finalists last year, can you push on with all that in place? Yeah, we'll have to take it. Well, listen, we started off the campaign poorly last year. We we two defeats in our first two games, and obviously we were lucky enough to bounce back in the last three. So we'd be looking to get off to a positive start. Um, you know, it's, it's results based, and we want to get that win now on Saturday evening. Um, and obviously James would be eager to to, to push on the yeah. next step. And obviously your next step is a county final. And you know, um, I suppose you can't be looking too looking too far ahead. But uh, Saturday evening is our first and our main goal, and getting a win there is is all we're kind of thinking about, really. You know. Now, of course, it will be a little bit of a f- festival atmosphere in Leitrim Village on Saturday night because it is Leitrim Gale's first ever uh, step into the senior championship. You're cast as the, the villains or the party poopers of the piece. Uh, is that your plan on Saturday night? I completely. Well, listen, regardless, you know, I, I, must, I, have, to, I have to say, and I, I give great credit to Leitrim Village from where they come from uh, in terms of formation of their club. I think I read there was 1997 or that. You know, to come to their first senior game now, and I suppose the, the novelty of having them at home is massive like none of us have ever played well, I've never played a championship game in my home pitch but for them to play their first ever senior championship game in their home pitch obviously that's going to be huge motivation for them um, but listen I haven't really thought about it I've I've, I've only played against Eton Games once um, ever at this level and I was in the league game uh, two years ago I, I was away last year so I wouldn't know too much about them um, a couple of lads there that I know Aidan Flynn or the county and uh, Colin Morton but other than that uh, it'd be very limited what I'd know about them but listen Bradley, no more than any team we're just focusing on ourselves as the as, uh, the the as it goes, I can't really think about what 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 they have or what what sort of occasion it is for them. We we'd want to be to come back down the road from Leitrim Gales unless we have two points in the bag, and I suppose that's and I suppose for them they obviously want to get the win. So it'll make for an interesting battle and add a bit of an atmosphere. But in terms of crowd and potential numbers of people, I'm not sure what the situation is again with COVID regulations. So um, I'm sure it might have been potentially bigger. Uh, had 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 restrictions been lifted a bit more, but it it makes for as you said a, a festival maybe uh, feel to it. But at the end of the day, both teams are eager to win. In terms of Melvin Gale's own home facility this year, uh, is your own ground ready, or are you still playing in Bundoran? 
No, yeah, we've our, our own pitch opened up there last week. Obviously, unofficially, technically, there was no official opening, but we're back out playing on it um, and we're back training on it. So we'll be looking forward to welcoming, hopefully, Saturday week. All going well. We'll hopefully welcome Alan Gales down there. And, you know, the pitch is in great shape and it's, it's a brilliant facility for us to have, obviously, a new pitch to go out on. And uh, it was an extra added boost for ourselves and it brought extra energy to, the, I suppose, the group to be getting out and playing on, on such a great facility. Well, listen, Emlyn, the very best luck to you on Saturday. Well, second best luck to you this Saturday, or I guess you yeah. won't be allowed to go home, but the best luck to you as the season progresses to you and your teammates, yeah. and I'm sure we'll be chatting to you as the season develops. Perfect, Brett, and your pleasure. Thanks for having me. Now, the game of the weekend, arguably, is in Mohol, where the hosts take on Balnamore, Shauna Heslins, and joining me to have a chat about the game is their top marksman, Keith Byrne. Keith, welcome to the programme. Bethany, how are you getting on? Thanks for having me on. No problem at all. My pleasure. It's been an interesting year. You, you came back to the county fold. Everything then put aside when you were absolutely flying uh, on a personal note uh, in terms of scores, some really, really good performances. What's it like being back and getting stuck into the club championship? Yeah, it's it's, it's been strange Like because we were all in the county and the clubs were starting that re- the secondary league and so it was kind of everyone was getting going and then everything was put to a halt and like four months kind of sitting at home not really having pitches to go to or not really having that kind of set up where you were dragged out to train and really has it's been very strange How have you managed to cope with that yourself? Um, I suppose I've just been working away with the sisters there in the house like just trying to do a bit of running on the road or up the back garden just practicing a bit of kicking or little things like trying to get keep some sort of a touch in play because you can't just come back from not touching the ball to being able to play and score at a high level. Has it been kind of nice to go back and just play football yourself without the organised structure but have you enjoyed that or has it just would you rather just get on with the training? Yeah, no, it was it was different. It was it was no harm like I'd say it gave a lot of people a lot a good break because like especially if you're playing inter county you're your season is effectively 12 months. So it's kind of the first time ever where you've just been at home in the evening and not had to actually be like, oh, I have to go here, now I have to go there, and now I have to go here and rushing everywhere. Yeah, of course. Now, if we turn our attention to Saturday evening, it's the first ever all-ticket game in Leitrim. Um, probably not due to the huge numbers that are expected, but due to the restriction of capacity. As a player, are you even aware of that sort of stuff, or is that just a, a distraction from what's actually going to be happening between the White Lions on Saturday night? Uh, yeah, we're, like, we're not going to notice much who's there or who's not there. Like, I suppose we have a bit of a home advantage, which is is kind of nice for the first day out anyway, because like obviously that's where we've been training the last two or three weeks now, so hopefully that gives a bit of an advantage. In terms of what we can expect, or the hundred or so lucky fans who get into the ground on Saturday evening can expect, um, is this an important game in the grand sense of things? Because five teams in the group and four of them go through, are you going to be showing your full card against Balnamore, or will you be holding a little bit back so maybe you can catch them on the hop later if you meet them in a semi final or a final, perhaps? No, championship is championship. Like that's a, we're in a group of death. Like there's five teams that are well capable of taking four spots. So every game we play is a must win, and we have to give it our all. We can't go out saying we might try and hold back here, hold back there. Like we're going 100 percent for every game. In terms of the squad, any new faces or any players lost from last season? Well, I think everyone in the county has bits and niggles. There's a lot of. Teams have a few hamstring pick, injuries picked up and a few different because we've all been trying to cram in challenge matches and in-house games. So we'll have two or three maybe niggles that we wouldn't like to have, but we'll have to get on with that and test how deep, how strong we are. And of course, so many games in such a tight time frame as well. Are you a fan of that or would you prefer to have it more traditional, every, a game every two or three weeks perhaps? No, personally, I prefer the games. Like You've grew up to play football like you want to play games games is what you at the end of the day is the aim so playing more games is much more enjoyable like no one likes going training for three or four weeks on end like people want to like the end of the day the goal is a match like in terms of we cast our mind a little bit past the club championship how are you uh looking forward to getting back into the the county action have even given that any thought at all with the, the two league games and the the crack against mayo later in the year 
Well, yeah, I suppose when the league was announced that it was going to be played, that kind of played on all our minds that we we kind of all were just kind of chatting over different social media platforms to each other, saying, like, Jesus, we have to kind of keep that in mind because we don't want to be playing in Division 4. We want to be playing Division 3 to, like, you, to progress. We need to be playing Division 3, Division 2 football. So it's in our, it's kind of in the back of everyone's mind that they do want to come back to that very strong so that we can give Tipperary a serious battle. Well, absolutely, and also say all of us across the county as we're listening to you say that. In terms of the the senior championship, though, what is I suppose the goals and aspirations for Mull in this year's championship? I know there's been senior titles in the recent past. Can you secure the FINA Cup again? Well, that's the aim. The aim is to win the championship, as as, as all the other teams will be saying as well. Like, but having won it in fifteen and seventeen, we've kind of slipped back in the last year or two and kind of took the foot off the gas and we there's a few lads like different ones of us have been gone travelling for different years so this is probably the first year where no one's actually travelling so hopefully that'll stand to us now and we can actually go on and see we're getting into a final first of all anyway well listen hopefully that run starts for you on Saturday night of course all ticket affair in Philly McGuinness Park in Mohol uh, between Mohol and the Last year's beaten finalists, Ballinamore, Sean O'Hessel, is probably the, the highest profile game of the weekend. Keith Byrne, thank you very much for joining me. Cheers, Bertie. No worries. Now, of course, the other half of that all ticket game on Saturday evening in Mull is Ballinamore, Sean O'Hessel's last season's finalists. And I'm joined by one of their selectors, Adrian Smith. Adrian, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bertie. How are things with you? Things are great, yeah. Looking ter- forward to getting getting that back stuck into the championship. In terms of Ballinamore, obviously went so close last year. There's a whole load of discussion about the sending off of Don Feely in the first half, the late free against uh, or scored by Connor Dolan, and all of the things. I'm sure from Ballinamore point of view that have been itching to be put right. It's been a long break. You must be looking forward to getting going on Saturday. Yeah, it seems like ancient history now at this stage, the, the final last year. So everybody has kind of forgotten all them things. To be honest with you, we haven't thought about them in a long time. We're just mad to get back playing football and start enjoying the thing again. Of course, Dom Corrigan in his second season with the club. Uh, there's been serious work put in both on and off the field in the club over the last few years. I hate to say it, but it's 30 years since that trophy last resided in Ballinamore. Can you put that right this year? Well, look, we're we're thirty years with that aim going out uh, to try and rectify that. So it's always the hope, uh, Bethany, that we can we can do that. But uh, the the reality is is that we 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 try to focus one game at a time, you know. So um, I think if we went ahead of ourselves and started thinking about thirty year gaps, etc., um, we wouldn't be long getting ambushed. So so we have to focus on the, the here and now. That's Mohol on Saturday. It's a relatively tough group that's been drawn against you there. Four teams in it, probably with genuine title ambitions. Um, what's your feeling going into that group in terms of uh, wooden spoons or little kind of slip-ups that put- could potentially be in there? Well, I think, uh, I don't know who you're leaving out, but there'll be five teams in that group with ambitions to get out of it. So um, uh, every every game is a potential wooden spoon and every team is a potential uh, yeah, relegation finalists, you know, so you just have to be so careful in, in your approach and, and not take any eyes off the balls. Uh, um, every game is going to be critical. It is it is a tough group and there's going to be no room for, for any sort of complacency or, or uh, you know, looking ahead of anybody or uh, towards any quarter final, you know. In terms of the actual personnel for Balnamore this season, can we expect to see any new faces in the squad? Yeah, well, we have we have a few young young chaps coming through there, um, the likes of Owen Shanley and and James Honeyman and uh, Senan Hart. We'd all would all um, be coming on to the senior scene this year. Um, all with good pedigree behind them, and uh, we hope they can make an impact. So it's, we're looking looking forward to. It. Unfortunately, we haven't had the league to to blood, to blood in new players, but. Um, uh, we'll have to just uh, learn as we go in the championship and, and see see who can make the impact. 
of course, uh, James Honeyman is the son of Joe, who would have been a stalwart with the club over many, many years. And Owen Shanley, a uh, son of Maeve Quinn, who in the female codes would have been a yeah. f- former multiple all-star winner. So uh, some Absolutely. pretty good pedigree coming through there. Donald Feely is away this summer, won't be part of your squad, having, I suppose, to, to go back to the last year's final. Um, will he be a big loss? Ah, of course, Donald is a, is a fantastic player and... and uh... It, it will be badly missed by us, you know. So, but it's up to it's up to other guys in the panel to step up and 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 uh, fill that gap because um, obviously now with the way the, the travel restrictions are gone, there's there's no real hope of anybody returning home to play any football unless they have it well planned in advance. And and uh, you know to to think that anybody could come home even at this stage and, and join the panel is 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 not on. So so we will have to plan with Donald, but hopefully that the uh, rest of the guys on the squad will, will, will see that as an opportunity and, and step up to the mark. Also, it appears now, based on reports, that the government uh, is, issued guidelines won't increase for more than 200 people. So we could be looking at the first couple of games, not just this weekend, but maybe the first three or four rounds of fixtures with only that limit of people allowed to games. Will that make a difference to the feel of the championship this year, do you think? I'm sure it will. This championship is going to be unique regardless of... of um whether it's 200 or 500 because of because of everything that has gone on it's going it's going to be it's going to be tricky for for administrators and, and club officials to sort out everything out uh, and, and it's going to be very disappointing for people who can't attend games but um uh, hopefully that uh, we all hope for the best in, the, in these times and, and hopefully that the, the numbers can be increased as soon as possible and and you know because everybody the players want to play and spectators want to watch games and Everybody wants to enjoy it. Absolutely, and it is a kind of a special part of a, a rural Irish summer, really, is going to the, the Gaelic Games on a Saturday or Sunday evening and Saturday. kind of cheering the local lads on. Uh, Adrian, thank you very much for, for joining me and for uh, bringing us up to speed and all that's happening over in Ballinamore. The very best of luck to the, the team and yourself and Don McCarrigan, Good the on, manager, uh, as the season progresses. Thanks. Definitely good to talk to you. Of course, one of the clubs taking part in this year's championship also shared the name of the trophy for the eventual winners of the competition, Fianna St. Collins, and I'm joined by their captain, Donald Ryan, ahead of their clash with St. Mary's on Saturday evening in Fianna. Donald, welcome back to the programme. Thanks very much, Brafney. Great to be back. No problem. It's great to be back, I suppose, really, in the grand scheme of things, from a footballer's point of view. How have the last few months been for you? (laughs) Um, strange, strange, definitely. Uh, I work in retail, so I've been quite busy actually over the last while. Um, but I suppose, uh, from a training point of view, it's, it's great to be back at it again. I definitely missed it over the last uh, couple of months. Now, we've heard different stories of different experiences in lockdown, people training on their own or in very small groups. How has the, the lockdown affected you and your own physical preparation ahead of the, the championship this year? Um, yeah, look, it's been very unusual, um, but I suppose it's, um, we just kind of had to adapt, um, you know, we've, we initially were training on our own and, you know, just tipping away and, and I suppose just keeping the group informed as to what we were, what we were doing. And, um, then eventually we were back to our smaller groups. So, um, I suppose that was, that was great because I suppose it, it gave us a bit of light at the end of the tunnel and, um, you know, it was, it was kind of good to, to, to get in contact with the guys face to face again. So. Um, you know, once we once once we came back to the pitch, then um, it was it, we we probably hadn't seen the numbers that we had there. Um, and the other year, I think the enthusiasm to, for people just to get back playing football um, was taken to a new level. And I suppose just the absence of us for the, for the previous couple of months. I suppose in terms of having five senior and county players in the, on your squad, it's. Fina must be looking forward to a, a fairly exciting season, but you've had a particularly tough draw this year. It has to be said. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's a difficult enough group. Um, it's a difficult group to be in, but um, I suppose the reward is there. Um, you know, if you get out, I suppose you, you probably might say that that um, that you're, you you could be looking at a, an easier quarter final. But um, I think with a ten team championship, most of the teams are are on a fairly uh, fairly even level, so um, I'm not sure if there is really an easy side or an easier an easier knockout game as such. So um, look, you just take what you get and you run with it. 
of what what is the the makeup of the squad this year in Fina? Any major changes, retirements, or injuries, or, or new faces to the team? Uh, some some new faces definitely. Um, so some of the new guys coming through. Um, Owen McLaughlin is there. He was on the minor team this year, and um, Fergal McLaughlin as well. Um, injuries touch wood. Now we're, we're fairly light on those for the time being. So um, fingers crossed it stays that way throughout the championship. You have a fairly tight uh, group of games. You you play St Mary's. You have a weekend off, and then it's three games back to back over consecutive weekends. Do you like that kind of intense? Um, championship season or would you prefer to see it a little bit more spread out um, I, I can honest personally I think we take anything we get at this stage um, but no I, look, I, I, I would be personally a fan of us I think you know you, you, after being after been off for so long you just you don't want to spend week after week training I think it's it's, it's great that there's more games and the games are coming thick and fast um, and it's a great way to keep the enthusiasm there so no I definitely take the, the, the current approach I suppose when you recommitted yourself personally back to the Leitrim team um, you probably didn't expect to have the season pretty much written off uh, through the summer this year uh, back when you signed up to the squad at the end of last year how has that affected I suppose your mental preparation for the club championship now uh, now it's one crack old style just play Mayo and if you lose it's game over um, that, geez, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. To, um, to be honest, um, I suppose the main focus at the moment is just the club, and, and you know, kind of tuning into that. Um, you know, whatever's whatever happens with the the inter county after that, um, you know, we'll we'll work with it. But um, I suppose for the time being, the, the focus is the club, and and um, we'll see what happens then afterwards. And what are the expectations in FINA this year? Where, where do you think you can reach with the group of players you have? Like you've some really, really good names there, the likes of Ryan and Reardon, yourself, Oshin McLaughlin, McLaughlin um, knocking on the door there, a Jack Alhini as well, knocking on the door of the senior squad. It must be exciting times for FINA. Do you think you can uh, get to a quarter final and, and pass that? Um, yeah, look, I think we definitely have a lot of a lot of potential within the team. Um, I suppose we just don't have um, the experience of, of the, the knockout stages of the championship. Um, you know, not any of our players have that at, at, at the moment. Um, and I suppose, given you know, given the, the current situation, we really don't know kind of where we stand. Um, we've worked really hard over the last couple of weeks, and I think we're, we're really well prepared for the championship. Um, but as regards where where I think we can finish up in the championship. I mean, I suppose that all depends on the other teams and where they're sitting. And um, I suppose for the time being, we don't really know where they're at. Um, but I think with with the preparation that that we put in, and I suppose with the potential that we have there, I mean, you know, there's no reason that we we couldn't go the whole way. But um, it's just a matter of seeing where everyone else is at as well. You know? Yeah, new manager of course with you this year Joe Flynn has joined, he was with Carrick last year I know Bobby O'Rourke was announced uh, over the, the winter and then he stepped away and now a different man again is everything okay in the club in, th- in that sense or what's what's going on really? Yeah, no um, yeah, things, things, are, things are, are, are very good in the club at the moment um, I suppose Bobby just stepped away for his own reasons uh, personal reasons so um, you know, there's no. I don't think there's any um, any hard feelings um, there. Um, it's, it was just a, a personal decision. But um, Joe's come in. He's done a really good job. So um, you know, we, we'll see. How, we'll, we'll see where we're at this weekend. But um, you know, I think I think we're in a good position and we're, we're well prepared for for the championship. Okay. Well, as we said at the start, you're playing St Mary's this weekend in Fina. Donalryn, the very very best luck to you and the squad for the whole season ahead. Great, thanks very much for having me. Great to talk to you again. And a massive thank you to everybody who spoke to me ahead of this week's championship preview. Uh, I think you have a fairly good idea of where the various clubs are. Maybe that can help to focus your mind on what each club is going to be bringing to the table over the next five weeks as the championship hots up into the coming months ahead it's going to be an interesting few months who do you think is going to win let us know comment on the social media get in touch with us let us know what you think we are looking forward to covering the championship this year thank you as i said to everybody who spoke to us Uh, don't forget at games this weekend if you're lucky enough to get a ticket social distancing applies try and stay two meters away from everybody around you 
and please wear a face mask in these situations it protects everybody it's not just about yourself it's about the community in in general looking out for each other and making sure that we can enjoy this environment and we can continue to enjoy this environment as the weeks progress uh, our sponsors today again the local enterprise office in Leitrim and particularly their 90 percent grant up to two and a half thousand euros for new e-commerce websites for businesses around the county and if you want to know more about that or help in developing that please get in touch with us here at Leitrim Daily and uh, we're going back to our roots designing websites so we would like to hear from you if you want to know more about that information or contact directly the local enterprise office in the county council offices here in Carrick and Shannon I'm sure they'll help you with your queries as well but there's two and a half thousand euros of a grant to help businesses get up and trading online Anyway, that is it for us for this week. Enjoy a game if you get to it, or I know um, other outlets, uh, Ocean FM, are doing uh, live summaries from games tomorrow, so there are opportunities for you to keep an eye on what's happening around the grounds. I know Twitter will be fairly active with game updates from clubs as well, and there's plenty of ways to follow the action if you can't make it to a game this weekend. But if you're lucky enough to get one of those... holy grail tickets this weekend go out and enjoy it Uh, just be careful and look out for each other i'll be back on monday with a roundup of all of the action Uh, talk to you then